All right, Bar Naturals, Prez, talk to the people, man. Let them know what's getting ready to go down. All right, what's good, bros? We just finished the workout. Did a full shoulder routine, you already know. So now I'm going to let you guys know how I think everyone should be eating in the morning for breakfast to start your day off right, to get your body moving and uh, burning off the right energy that it wants to stay productive and stay lean and build muscle throughout the whole day. So, like I've mentioned previously, uh, I don't knock people that eat a vegan diet, but uh, my main thing is, I believe a main, the main meal of your day should always be consisted, consisted of, the first meal of the day should be quality protein and quality fats. But before that, I'm very big on gut health. And when I say gut health, I mean the actual gut itself, like the intern, your intestines, the microbiome, the bacteria that's in your that's in your that's in your body to begin with, your gut flora. You guys are hear about this. People talking about it all over. You hear pre, uh, probiotics and everything good for your gut. So the reason that that is is because the gut is where everything gets broken down. That's where um, disease. That's where they say diseases are bred from. So if you got an unhealthy gut, that's where inflammation stems from. That's where diseases are bred from. That's where it leaks into your body. You've heard of leaky gut syndrome. So I'm always very big on gut health. So. First thing in the morning I recommend everybody doing, drinking 10 ounces of water and taking a shot of apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is gonna put a lot of good enzymes and uh, nutrients with zero calories into your body. It's gonna kickstart your metabolism and it's gonna basically almost cleanse you out. And the next thing I do every morning before I put any type of uh, actual protein or fats in my body is I eat some type of fermented food. So if you're a vegan, you guys should be big on this also because fermented foods are, all the time they come from plant sources. So I would eat sauerkraut, I'll eat uh, kimchi, anything fermented, cabbage, uh, fermented beets. Why do you want fermented foods? Because fermented foods are high in probiotics naturally. If you can find probiotics in food sources, they are 10 times more available. I mean, when I say available, I mean bioavailable. Your body will utilize them and take them in more than anything you find in a pill form. Just like I said previously with, with powders and, and whole foods, your body always prefers whole, su whole food sources of these nutrients. So if you could get probiotic sources from foods and put them in your body first thing in the morning, it's gonna prime your digestive system and your gut to have good bacteria and everything you eat uh, after that and uh, throughout the day, it's gonna get broken down and utilized in your body a lot better. It's gonna help with digestion, it's gonna help you use the bathroom bore. Uh, better and uh, just in general probiotics like I said are excellent for the gut so they they flood your gut with good bacteria your body is full of bacteria naturally it always has good bacteria and bad bacteria if you have an overwhelming amount of bad bacteria that's where diseases and inflammation get stemmed from so you always want to have a ba uh, overbalance of good bacteria to bad bacteria and that comes from probiotic sources so like I said fermented foods kimchi sauerkraut uh, cabbage anything fermented stuff like that and then uh, I'm also big, again, on drinking collagen and where you're going to find and collagen sources of protein because collagen is, is uh, mostly only found in animal sources. You're going to find it in cows, um, any type of animal, but it's the, it's the lining of like their, it's their connective tissues and everything of their bones. But what that has is it has a lot of minerals and um, basically collagen is a gelatin, like it's very soft. It goes down in your body and it coats your insides, it coats your, dige your digestive tract now. And now it's also, besides being a source of protein, it also is now supplying your body with a bunch of nutrients and it's calming and soothing of the insert of the gut lining of your body. So the first two things I always eat in the morning are fermented foods and some type of uh, collagen that I make myself. So I boil bones, I buy bones from a butcher. I always make sure I get it from a good animal, grass-fed animal. I usually buy bison bones or beef bones. I boil them in water, 15 hours. Or you got buy a bone, you can buy a pound of bones, cost five dollars. Take a few of them, throw them in water, let them boil for a few hours, 10 hours minimum, and you're gonna see that water is gonna turn into a broth, nice, rich, thick, gelatin-like broth. Drink that every morning. That's gonna, again, it's gonna give your your gut and your whole intestinal lining the nutrients and the coating it needs to also work optim optimally, and it's gonna flush out whatever whatever shits in there. And then getting on to the food, so I have mentioned again, I always recommend eating a high protein and moderate fat diet in the morning and up until you're going to train. So why is that? Because I always believe that if you're feeding your body protein and fat during the day and you're eliminating carbohydrate sources, 
it's going to teach your body to run off of fat. That's the theory of ketosis. People go into keto diets thinking they're going to eat protein and fat only and it's going to put them into a uh, non-stop fat burning mode, which in theory is true, but it's the main thing about keto, just to let you guys know, is, is an elimination of carbs completely. So you, you're cutting out a whole macronutrient source, so you're, it's almost forcing you to be in deficits, and deficits will cause weight loss no matter what. But again, I always believe having a high protein and a moderate fat diet in the morning of healthy fats is best. So whole eggs, don't get confused, whole eggs do not cause high cholesterol. You're, if you do not eat cholesterol, your body is going to start producing more cholesterol. If your body's eating healthy source of cholesterol, your body will control its levels. It will not produce extra. That's a little tip for you guys also. And um, so whole eggs, avocado, coconut oil. Um, night, um, you want to get good pasture-raised sources of bacon is good. You want to avoid that shit with nitrates and all, the, and all the sodium in it. If you can get good bacon from a farmer's market or something, bacon's a good, uh, good source of protein and fat in the morning. So again, protein and fat in the morning to keep your body in that fat burning state. And the protein to supply the uh, steady supply of amino acids to your muscle throughout the day. So in the morning, first thing in the morning, like I said, I have apple cider vinegar. I have a cup of either cabbage, sauerkraut, kimchi. Then I have a bowl of broth. This is all in, all in one shot. Apple cider vinegar, water. I'll, I'll, t I'll do like a 10 minute walk every morning. I walk as soon as I wake up also. Vinegar, first thing in the morning, then I go for a walk. I have a dog, so I walk my dog, but even if I didn't, I would still walk. That's also going to kickstart your metabolism. Then I get into the food, so then I have the, the kimchi. Or What's the that, by the way? Kimchi? I never heard of kimchi that. Kimchi is, uh, it's Japanese. It's a, it's a mixture of a bunch of fermented vegetables. So they'll throw like cabbage, carrots, uh, sauerkraut, everything mixed together. It's in its Japanese version, so it's more spicy. Kimchi is like a spicy fermented thing. Okay. But it's uh, you can find it in any supermarket, farm market. It's a big thing now. It's a big trend. You'll find it in all restaurants too. What's the spices they put in? There? You say it's spicy. What yeah, they, I what? don't know. Cayenne yeah. pepper, ginger. Oh, they put a lot of ginger in there. Okay. So you'll find uh, oh, a, heat, a lot of heat-based foods in kimchi. A lot of heat, uh, heat spices. Okay. So moving on to the foods, like I said. So the kimchi, the broth. Then I'm gonna have. Then every morning I have three over easy eggs. I have some bacon, uh, and a. Uh, I have a little bit of fruit, berries. I keep my, if I'm going to have any fruit or any carb sources, it's going to come from berries, which are very low in sugar. So I always have a cup of blueberries with my breakfast. And then I'll wait about two, three hours. Then I'll have one more meal before I train, which is when I have my, again, I'll have a banana in this shake. So I have in this shake is raw spinach, one banana, scoop of peanut butter, another scoop of protein, and almond milk and sea moss. So that's about a 500 calorie shake, uh, mostly of protein and carbs, moderate fats from the peanut butter, and uh, the carbs are only coming from the banana and the spinach. The spinach is all fiber. You don't you don't count. So when I talk about carbs pre-workout, I don't ever like I said I don't ever say to eliminate a green a green vegetable. What's your YouTube channel? YouTube is Bar Naturals. B A R N A T U R A L S. One word. Okay. All right. Thank you. So. Like I said, when I talk about eliminating carbs pre-workout, I, I talk about eliminating starches, breads, rices, oatmeal, pastas. I don't ever uh, sugary fruits. That's why I keep it berries in the morning and one banana pre-workout in my shake, which my body's going to use that that carbohydrate for energy. So, and it's only going to be the banana. You mentioned bacon. Yeah. How much bacon? I eat two slices of bacon, and if you don't want two have slices, bacon, that's okay. Have have turkey again. You want? Yeah. The bacon, I'm eating good source of bacon. I'm getting it from a farmer's market, so I know it's it's uh, pasture raised. The, the, the pigs are eating what they're supposed to eat. They ain't getting fucking factory fed corn and everything. Okay. But I mean, you can scratch the bacon, just have the eggs, avocado, and some slices of turkey or some salmon. Some uh, smoked salmon is always good. I love lox, it has a lot of omegas in it. And just to let you guys know if you're getting good eggs, brown, uh, omega rich eggs, there's a lot of good omega 3s and omega 6s in those eggs, which your body wants, those good omegas. So moving on from the breakfast, now I said I'm on the, the pre-workout shake, which is what I have every day. It's the raw spinach, the banana, sea moss, one scoop of peanut butter, one scoop of protein, and almond milk. So I said it's moderate uh, carbs from the banana, and it's just protein and fat from the peanut butter. So again, that's the protein, and uh, I mean the carb from the banana and the fat from the peanut butter and the almond milk are pretty much primarily, primarily fuel, fueling my exercise. Protein is not a source of energy. It's a it's a source of energy, but it's not what your body's going to use to train. So if you think, oh, I'm going to have a protein shake pre-workout for energy, 
is not going to be the case. It's not supplying your muscles with energy. What's going to supply your body with energy is the fat sources and the carb sources. That's why I keep my, my pre-workout meals mainly protein and fat, so my fats are higher in the day in the morning, so my body's running more off fats than if it is off carbohydrates. And then when I'm in the workout, I'm burning, I'm breaking down the stored carbohydrates from the previous day eating. My muscles are breaking down those carbohydrates, and then when I eat after, after I train, that's when I start eating protein and carbohydrates more and eliminate the fats. So if you post workout, like I said, I subscribe and turn on the notification bell. You're the man, brother. So, like I said, post workout, protein and carbs to shuttle those carbohydrates and that sugar to the muscles that you just used and broke down. That's how you stay lean, guys. The trick is manipulating the calorie, the manipulating the nutrient timing. That's how I always pitch. That's how I always te teach my clients and try to tell it and teach it. You got to teach your body when to use the nutrients that you're taking in. So in the mornings you eat protein and fat, your body's going to be in a fat burning state. It's going to be burning more fat during the morning and during your exercise. And another thing guys, if you're, if you're working on a higher fat diet in the morning, it's giving your body more energy. Remember, fat supplies nine calories per gram, whereas carbohydrates and protein only supply four calories per, per gram. So the, more, the higher the fat content in your diet in the morning, the more sources of energy your body could run off of. Because now, only, now instead of breaking down four grams of, of a carbohydrate, it's going to break down nine grams of the fat. So it's going to get almost double the energy sources from your workout when running on a higher fat diet than a higher carb diet for your workouts. So that's a little tip, guys. And, I, and it works for me and it's worked for numerous clients that I've trained. Just trick, trick your nutrients into eating more, keeping your carbohydrates all post-workout. Your post-workout meal and for the meals to come, that's when your body's going to utilize those carbs and it's going to take them in and store them as energy and not as fat. So I'll keep it short and simple like that. Breakfast pre-workout, and then post-workout tip for you guys, that's but, it. But for breakfast, you're saying eat primarily protein? Protein and fat, protein, protein and fat. And if you're gonna have a carb, keep it, a, if you're gonna have a carb, make sure it's a, a fruit, and it's a low sugar fruit, like a berry. Blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries. Keep that pri for the first meal of the day. And you always wanna start your, your day off with a nice probiotic, something that's gonna help your gut intestine. So kimchi, any fermented food, a, a bone broth, apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar, man. I've been hearing stuff about that, like apple cider vinegar as like a fungus or something. It has something what's called the mother in it, which yeah. is, uh, it looks like a little like a live, it's an enzyme. What it is, it's a, it's a living enzyme. And so if you pasteurize something, you could find, you could find apple cider vinegar in the store that's pasteurized already. It would just be um, liquid like a orange brown liquid but if you get one that's unpasteurized that's the key thing when you're doing the apple cider vinegar you've got to get an unpasteurized version of it it's called it has the mother in it that's what they call it but it's a live enzyme it's a living enzyme because again the purpose of having the pro the apple cider vinegar in the morning is to give your body those nutrients those enzymes that are alive still so your body could could flourish and, and take in those good uh, digestive enzymes and start your metabolism for the day if you're getting a pasteurized version you're eliminating all that already, so it's it's pointless to take. So you want to look for uh, apple cider vinegar with the mother in it. Like I said, it's unpasteurized, and the brand that everybody gets is Braggs, B-R-A-G-G-S. No free promo, but that's what it is. Okay. All right, so you pretty much explain, you know, what you should eat in the morning for breakfast. Um, what about intermediate, intimate fasting? Do you ever mess with that sometimes? Yeah, so you want to talk about IF, intermittent fasting? So I'm going to let you guys know... I only talk about things that I have experience on. So in the past, I've done vegan. I, I, I went vegan for almost five months, but it was years ago. It was about 2011. I probably really didn't know what I was doing on it. I did it the wrong way, but I did it, and it didn't work out for me. I did keto. I had no, I had no problems with keto, except the fact that I was too thin on it, I feel like, and I, and I just wanted to, I didn't want to avoid a whole, carb, a whole macronutrient source of carbohydrates anymore, so. I realize, you know, that's not necessary either. But again, I like to, I only speak on things that I try and I like to try to experience it and put my body through it so I can speak on it. You did vegan the wrong way. So talk about that for a minute. You I did, did vegan the wrong way. So I got, okay, so if you're going to be a vegan, you got to make sure your nutrients are on point. You got to make sure you're getting sufficient protein. You need to be getting complete sources of protein. Now, if you're a carnivore and you're eating meat, all you got to do is eat an egg. That's a complete source of protein. A piece of chicken, complete source of protein. A piece of meat, a piece of fish, all of that, one piece of each of them, 
They're a complete source of protein, meaning they contain all of the essential amino acids. Essential amino acids, meaning your body cannot make them. You have to get them from food sources. And for an, in order for a protein to be complete, it has to contain all 10 of the essential amino acids. Now again, like I said, if you have a piece of fish or, a piece of, or an egg or a piece of meat, they already contain all the essential amino acids in them themselves. But now, if you're doing it vegan, you got to start combining sources. So now you get a, now you get people gonna say, "Oh, beans are a vegan source of protein." You could get protein from rice. Okay, rice is only gonna have five of the essential amino acids. Now you're missing five still. So if you're only eating rice, your protein is considered incomplete because it's missing half of the essential amino acids you need to get. So when I was doing it. I didn't know what food sources to combine. I, I lost weight on it, no doubt. One again, because I saw I eliminated meats. I eliminated almost everything else that I was eating. I was only eating potatoes, fruit, and uh, like tubers and stuff like that, grains. And again, I didn't know how to combine the foods to make a complete protein. So I was, besides getting skinny, but I also lost muscle mass. So any muscle mass that I had on my body was shrinking because I had no, I wasn't supporting it the way that it's supposed to be supported. So if you're a vegan and you're doing it the correct way, I won't knock you. And, 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 and I don't disagree with it, but I think it's very hard to do and do correctly and sustain it because you're gonna have to start mixing all these different sources of food just to get the equivalent of one small thing you could get from another food group, you understand? So that's how I did vegan wrong. Okay. What about nuts in the nuts in the seeds? Those don't those have a lot of protein. Yeah, People okay, say so you're fats, I'm, yeah. Yeah, so just yeah. The, any nut, for example, right. peanut, almond, cashew. Look at the macro all right, so look at the macronutrients on a serving size of nuts. Serving size of nuts is usually one ounce, twenty-eight grams. That could be a serving of peanuts, it could be a serving of peanut butter, a serving of almonds, a serving of almond butter. It always is look on the back of the thing, it's always twenty-eight grams, one ounce. So now in that one ounce, in that one serving. It's gonna be about, I think it's like 14 grams of fat, or yeah, about 14 grams of fat. So remember, it's nine grams, nine calories per gram. So if you had 14 grams of fat in your peanut butter or your peanuts, and then it's gonna have about seven grams of carbs and maybe one gram of protein only. So now that food is primarily a fat source. It's no longer, it's not, nuts are not a protein source. Peanut butter is not a protein source. Look at the macronutrient break, break, breakdown of a peanut butter. I'm going to do it for you guys for sure. So let's pull out my fitness pal. Yeah, let's put this on camera for you guys. Most of uh, your nuts and seeds are high in fat, high in low fat. in carb, low in... Low in protein and moderate carb. So okay. let's, just, let's just go. Let's just do it. Let's just do a little example. Let's put in one serving on my fitness pal. We're going to put in one serving of almonds. We're going to search almonds almonds one ounce of almonds now look at that it's gonna have 15 grams of fat six grams of protein and five grams of carbs now let's let me show you how this got how this breaks down guys I'm gonna add it so now for today that's the only thing I put in my fitness pal for today was the almonds that I ate it gave me 170 calories now look at the breakdown of nutrients macros that almonds are 75 percent fat 11 percent carbohydrates and 14% protein. So, the majority of that nut is a fat. Just to let you guys know. Ha same thing for any nut. So, if you think your nuts are a source of protein, you're in for it. You got you got a misconception. <laughs> you want to do it? Go ahead. You're gonna get. You, and again, to to get that complete protein from a vegan source, you have to combine those nuts along with some beans and some and maybe some rice. And now you got three different food groups that are relatively heavy and filling to eat in in abundance amounts you know so who wants to eat a whole bowl of beans with two <laughs> servings of nuts and a whole bowl of rice i mean to me it's a hard. vegan that's a who vegan. Okay, but like i said if you enjoy it and you're doing it right more power to you but if you're looking for an, a better alternative a more sustainable alternative you know maybe switch up to vegetarian eat some fish eat a little bit of eggs because again fish and eggs are going to supply are going to supply you all the essential amino acids that your body needs to perform and build muscle the correct way. Okay. All right, so I gave you a little extra there. This, this interview was really about, you know, what you start your day, what you eat for breakfast, but he threw a little bit yeah, extra yeah, in there know, for you, man. So y'all do y'all research, too, on, you know, what uh, Bar Natural Prayers is talking about. 
Uh, thanks again for this interview. Links to uh, his um, Instagram and YouTube page will be in the description box. Make sure y'all subscribe to his YouTube page. Follow him on Instagram. Thanks a lot. All right. Alrighty. Okay. Thank you. That's All right. the money. All right. Peace out. All right.